Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 2009 white MacBook. have here is the 2009 MacBook. So as you guys know, the MacBook was made from 2006 to 2012. Um, this was a redesign in 2009 to make it unibody, just like the MacBook Pros. Of course, still in polycarbonate. Uh, it only came in white. And of course, as you can see over time, it has definitely uh, aged a little bit. And the top of this one also looks pretty bad. As you can see, it is uh, pretty scratched up. Now it is a chunky laptop for sure uh, by today's standards. And then on the bottom, of course, we had that rubberized material. And as you can see, she is quite dirty. So we will clean this up. Hopefully we can make this look a little bit better. So this late 2009 MacBook model, uh, the specs on this was a, it has a 2.26 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. We have two gigs of RAM at 1066 megahertz, uh, expandable up to eight gigs. Only four was supported by Apple, but you could put eight in there. Had uh, for graphics, integrated NVIDIA GeForce 9400M with 256 megabytes of shared memory. We have a 250 gig, uh, 5400 RPM drive. You had an optional 320 or 500 gig hard drive if you want to do that. Uh, we had, of course, a slot loading uh, DVD-R, CD-R drive, or super drive as they call it. We do have, of course, Wi-Fi, airport, 802.11abgn. We, of course, have two USB ports, one optical digital audio out. We have, of course, the iSight camera on here, which was 640 by 480, so really crappy. Uh, had mini display port for video out. A 60 watt hour battery, weighs 4.7 pounds, chunker. And of course, we have a 13 inch uh, display here, and that was a 1280 by 800 pixel resolution display. As for the su uh, supported operating system, this would have come out with 10.6 uh, Snow Leopard. And that seems like ages ago. And the latest supported operating system for this is 10.13 High Sierra. And just for reference, we are about to hit Mac OS 13 Ventura. So there have been now five uh, versions since the latest version that this supports. All right, so now we're gonna give this a little bit of a clean. So I'm just gonna use some all-purpose cleaner all around just to kind of get any excess dirt off of here. And because it is plastic, I may polish it just to see if that does anything. So um, as you can see here, we've got a lot of scratches all over it and some dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up really quick. Now the bottom of this is super dirty, so I'm gonna try the all-purpose cleaner, but I think what might work a little bit better is a magic racer, which obviously this one's kind of crappy, but it should still work nonetheless. All right, first we're gonna try the all-purpose cleaner, see if this does anything to it. Wow, I don't, ooh, that is very dirty. I don't think that's gonna make much of a difference though. I'm gonna try a little bit of magic racer just to see if this actually makes any difference on this. And it looks like, wow, that is definitely, Definitely doing a lot more than just spraying it. What a difference that made. As you can see, it looks really, really much better now. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and work on the inside of the computer. So I'm not gonna use as much cleaner here, but we're gonna try and see if we can get this to look a little bit better. Now, Now for the top of the laptop, I'm gonna try this. I have this little system I bought a while ago uh, by Novus. And as you can see, we have a heavy scratch remover, fine scratch remover, and then a plastic clean and shine. So we're gonna go through these and just see if we can get the top of the MacBook to look a little bit better. So here it is in its current state. As you can see, it is quite scratched up and I'm pretty sure any white MacBook you see now probably won't look very good unless it's had uh, some sort of cover on it. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the uh, heavy scratch remover first. And as you can see, it is definitely getting some dirt off. And here it is after one go with the uh, heavy duty. So we'll try the fine scratch to see if that does anything to it. All right, so we'll go with number two here. And this is after one go with the fine scratch remover. And you can definitely have, you see it has a more of a sheen now, but still lots of micro scratches here. Now, one more product I wanna try before we go to the, just the cleaning part is this Plastex, and this is from Meguiar's. It's normally used for headlights. You can also use it for any other clear plastic. So we're gonna try it on here. And here it is after the Plastex. And as you can see, we do have a much nicer sheen, a lot of scratches still present, but definitely looks a lot better than it did initially. So now we'll go ahead and clean with the last step of the Novus. And as you can see, that's more of just a liquid, not really a polish or anything. This is just to clean any plastic. So, 
So there it is. So a little bit better. It's definitely an improvement. Not going to be perfect, of course, but definitely looks better. All right, now our moment of truth. Does it actually work? All right, let's see. All right, we got the orange light. We have the chime. Yes. Well, we didn't boot into anything, but we came to the macOS utility, so I'm assuming we can just reinstall macOS and we can start fresh from here. All right, so it looks like our startup disk is not working out, so let's see if we can actually reinstall here. Or actually, I'm just going to see disk utility first. I want to see if anything is maybe wrong with the drive. Um... Okay, so nothing is installed on here. That's why it's going to the recovery partition. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it. It's not installed. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. All right, so Mac OS High Sierra. The recovery server could not be contacted. I think because we need to have Wi-Fi. Oh, the Wi-Fi is not on. So we do have to connect to Wi-Fi before we can download Mac OS. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're gonna try it again. Now that we're on the network, let's see if that actually works. All right, so it looks like the recovery here is not going to So I've had a bunch of issues trying to get macOS to install on the hard drive that's on the laptop. So including the issue where macOS would not download, I finally fixed that by actually, of course, going to Wi-Fi because I didn't have that on. And then I went ahead and changed the date because that was an issue. It did eventually go into the setup. But after that, I was not able to install it to the hard drive because it was not formatted or it just told me that there wasn't enough space. I can't remember exactly the error I was getting, but it wouldn't let me install to the hard drive. So I ended up creating a bootable USB, which was also a pain to do. And then I finally was able to format it. So as you can see, I formatted it to Macintosh HD. Um, however, uh, I got to install it, but it gave me an error at the very end saying that it could not, uh, it wasn't able to make it bootable. I can't remember the exact error message. So I've given up on the hard drive that's on here and I ended up ordering an SSD to put in here. However, because I was having issues with installing it from a bootable USB, I went ahead and I got a, a cable to hook this up and I'm gonna use the recovery partition to install it. So let's see if that actually works. And I got this SSD from Amazon. I have never heard of this brand, but for 128 gigs, it was only $15.99. So I figure what's the harm here? It's going in a very old laptop, so it doesn't really need a lot of space anyway. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. All right, so I've now plugged in the SSD here. So let's see if it actually shows up on the system. And there it is. So we have the Sabret Media. So it's uninitialized, so we do need to go ahead and erase it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and name it Macintosh SSD. I'm gonna format it as APFS. You know what, maybe I won't. I'll just format it as it is, and we'll just go like this. I just want to see if it actually works in the first place. Okay, erase is complete. All right, so now we have the SSD. So let's go ahead and see if we can install Mac OS. All right, so we're at the install screen. Let's go ahead and hit continue. All right, now the moment of truth. We do have our Macintosh SD here. So let's go ahead and see if it'll install. All right, about 15 minutes remaining. Now the, the problem I had with the previous time when I got this to work, it would get to the very end and say there was a problem. So let's cross our fingers on this. And after forever of an installation, we're actually at the welcome screen. So it is still running off the SSD. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up and then we're gonna go ahead and turn this over and install it into the computer. All right, we finally made it to the desktop on here. So let's actually look at the specs of this because I actually didn't get a chance to do that. So as you can see, we have the 13 inch MacBook uh, late 2009 has the Intel Core 2 Duo. This actually has eight gigs of RAM. Uh, it looks like the startup disk is the SSD that we have. And this also has the GeForce 9400 uh, 256 megabytes um, GPU. And as you can see, it's running off of that. And we still have the hard drive integrated in here. Obviously that's not being used, but not bad specs for the time. So now what we'll go ahead and do is uh, we'll go ahead and shut this down and we're gonna actually put the SSD into the computer. So our MacBook is unibody. So um, we have, looks like eight screws total, a little different than the traditional MacBook Pro. It does have this rubberized bottom on it. So it doesn't actually have feet like the MacBook Pro does. And I'm gonna use my iFixit kit to go ahead and remove the screws on here. All right, here it is. Here's our bottom panel, which just looks so much like just a traditional metal MacBook Pro. Now this one actually looks nearly identical. I think the Placement is just a little bit different. I think the hard drive is placed on this side, other on the MacBook Pro, but uh, pretty similar. So let's go ahead and remove this hard drive and uh, put the SSD in here. 
just like so. And then on the hard drive, we have these little nubs. We're gonna have to transplant these to the new drive. All right, now I've transplanted each of these little screws in here as well as our sticker, and we can place it back inside the MacBook. So we just reconnect it like so, stick it back in here, and then we can place this back on and we can screw it back into place. All right, so she's back in. Let's go ahead and clean it up. All right, the back is screwed back on. And now let's see if it boots. And here we are. SSD worked just fine. So there you have it. Our 2009 MacBook is back up in a running state. Got nice and cleaned up. We cleaned up, of course, the keyboard and everything here. We polished up the top a little bit, made it look a little bit better. And of course, on the bottom, we cleaned it up really nice, put in an SSD. So now she's running pretty good. And I'm now gonna give this to my sister and she'll have a nice older MacBook and it still does just fine. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I'll see you in the next one.